In our last episode, Captain Skippy was recalled to headquarters for failing to obey orders. Dad, the trial's about to start. What are you going to do? I got a plan. With a little luck and some skill on my part, the judge just might buy it. Okay, good luck. Everybody, please squat. The Honorable Judge McAtee presiding. Thank you, Bailiff. Thank you. Yeah. First case, State versus Captain Skippy. The charge? Failure to crash your ship into enemy territory. How do you plead, Captain? Not guilty, your beloved. Honor. Honor. On what grounds, uh, Captain Skippy? Here goes. Here Good luck, Dad. <clears throat> On the grounds that my son forcibly restrained me from carrying out the orders. Oh. Oh. Dad! Hey, look, look, look. You're young. You're young, son. You can afford to spend 20 years in a brig. Are you crazy, Dad? Look, look, look. Do this one little thing for me, and I'll never ask you to do anything again. I understand, Dad. I understand. Okay, good. Lieutenant, what do you say about these counter charges? I appreciate this, son. No problem, Dad. <clears throat> only, only, Your Honor, that my father is lying through his yellow tea. Oh, That's exactly God. right. Some son, you are. All right. Order yeah. into court. Order into uh, court. Boy, Settle down. <laughs> it is apparent that one of you is lying. Therefore, I will ask both of you to step into the death-orama. Yes, whoever is lying will be immediately disintegrated. That's <coughs> fine with me, Your Honor, fine with me. <coughs> Captain Skippy? Uh, well, uh, in the words of a great poet, Your Honor, uh, I can't go for that. No can do. Okay, order in the court. Order in the court. So you are guilty. Yes, Your Mother. Honor. Honor. And you tried to put the blame on your own son. Well, I'm not positive he is mine. How low can you stoop? That's a good question, Your Honor. Why don't you give me back my ship and let's find out. Silence! Huh? You have betrayed your country and your own family. You have proved to be untrustworthy and disloyal. What have you to say for yourself? Just that the day I was born, I was thrown out into the snow, Your Honor. Captain Skippy made a dramatic and tearful plea to the judge for over 35 minutes. He covered his entire life of misery and pain. Finally, he threw himself on the mercy of the court. In the end, there wasn't a dry eye in the house. That, Your Honor, is my story. All right, uh, honor, 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 honor. I beg, I beg, Your Honor, for mercy. I see. All right. My judgment is this. I sentence you. No, please, 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 no, please, no, no, Captain. No, 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 no. I sentence you. Please, come on, Your Honor, please. Uh, uh, please. Uh. I sentence you to prove your bravery and courage by destroying the great oracle on the planet Nifrod. Oh. Come on, get serious. That's it. Destroy the great oracle? Sure. And why don't I just swallow a couple of black holes while I'm at it? You have one week. If you fail, you will be put to death. Oh. Yeah. Oh, Dad, my gosh, how can he destroy the great oracle? Why, why is he doing this? Why? Because there's no end to this stinking script yet, and it gives him another week to come up with oh, one. Oh, I knew there was Real something simple. like that. Why can't we Join us that? again next time for another exciting episode of Space Patrol. Similar activities. Mm -hmm. Let me point out that we are the only company in the picking up and delivering business that also provides the customers with some other alternatives as far as uh, our services. Like what? Half price on just picking up your item. Uh -huh. We'll charge half for that. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, however, we we do have a, a a double special, and we will charge you double mm -hmm. for delivering it before we pick it up. Oh. So that costs you twice. Okay. 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 Right. okay. okay. We are also right, uh -huh. the only, to my knowledge, pickup and delivery service. This is for a home or commercial use that has complete driver insurance. Driver insurance. For instance, let me give you a rundown of our driver insurance okay. policy. If one of our drivers attacks your dog or beloved family member while picking up an item, mm -hmm. we'll pay for the first fifty dollars in damages mm -hmm. for medical bills. Mm -hmm. You're the only ones in the business to do that. Okay. Right. If while they're at your home picking up or and or delivering an item, uh -huh. if they verbally harass or insult a female member of your family, a written apology from me, Mike Barbeda, Executive Vice President. Well, that's nice. That's nice. If one of our drivers at your home or business mm -hmm. use your front garden as a restroom. A sincerely written apology from me. No, that does not apply to a backyard garden because they who saw it. Front right. yard gardens. All right. Okay. Only for front yards and publicly conspicuous places. All right. All right. All right. If mm -hmm. while at your house mm -hmm. or business, mm -hmm. they somehow memorize your phone number mm -hmm. and begin making calls threatening your life, mm -hmm. we'll pay for a phone number change. <laughs> We're here, Rod. Yeah, you're to there. To ensure your safety and your happiness. We do one thing and we do one thing only, Ron. Okay. We... Pick it up now. We pick it up now, and we deliver right it now, now, 24 Thanks. hours a day. What's the phone number? 749-0123. Yeah, I wish we... Uh, we may have to stop giving that out over the air. Why? Some of my drivers are calling, threatening my life. <laughs> so, uh, 
but use it. Just real quick, say it again. 749-0123. Jet delivery. A vote for Gary Ryan is a vote for a man in the words of one Corona, the sickest human being I've ever met. Vote for Mark Watkins. Paid for by friends of Mark Watkins, Fred Littler, chairman. And on that day, whether to re-elect Mark Watkins and watch as well as read about his sickness and perversion for the next four years, or elect Gary Ryan and relax in the knowledge that he is doing his job as Inspector General in an upright, honorable manner. Question. What has Mark Watkins accomplished while in office? He has managed to totally disfigure his wife through numerous beatings. He has had both his sons neutered. He has kidnapped 24 hookers, which he now has in the basement of his home that resembles a medieval torture chamber. Mark Watkins' mind has been eaten away by his continued use of LSD, PCP, peyote, cocaine, and heroin. Yesterday, we mentioned his human skin lampshades. Today, we can state, thanks to a tour of his office with Dr. Thomas Noguchi, his desk is actually made of carved and highly polished femur bones. His office chair is fashioned from human rib cages. Is this what you want in the Inspector General's office? We don't think so. The letter from his daughter? Written during an acid trip in which she sacrificed two dogs in honor of her drug-supplying dad. Elect Gary Ryan, Inspector General. Paid for by friends of Gary Ryan, Jeff Lackey, Chairman. Every decent, law-abiding resident of our state. Another statement we should be hearing is incumbent Mark Watkins should be in Chino. His sickness and perversion is best told by his former executive secretary, who in a notarized statement says, quote, Mark Watkins has used his office to force decent women to submit to his sick sexual desires. He has, on numerous occasions, phoned Don Henley of the Eagles and given him cocaine in return for the use of 15 and 16-year-old girls. Mark Watkins is so lazy that for the past four years he has used a corner of his office to perform body functions rather than walk to the restroom just two doors away, end quote. Mark Watkins' secretary left his employ when she became pregnant and he offered to buy the baby, then went into graphic details about what he was going to do with the child. Be smart. Vote for Gary Ryan, Inspector General. Paid for by friends of Gary Ryan, Jeff Lackey, Chairman. Inspector General of California. You can stand up and be counted and vote for Mark Watkins, or you can crawl out of your cootie-infested slime and vote for Gary Ryan. We believe decent people will exercise their right and cast their vote for Mark Watkins and send a message at the same time to Gary Ryan that says, go gag yourself with a meat hammer. Since this will be Mark Watkins' last chance to speak with you, he especially wanted you to hear a note written by Gary Ryan's own personal physician, Dr. Alex Ramon. It reads, Mr. Ryan's personal hygiene is so low it boggles the mind. I spent three years working with Guatemalan derelicts who would be ashamed to have Mr. Ryan's hygiene condition. His underwear had obviously not been changed since Truman was president, and it had to be pried off with surgical tools and then buried at a nuclear waste dumping site. If a man can't control his hygiene, how can he control the office of Inspector General? Tomorrow, tell Gary Ryan to keep his herpy-infested vermin bait body out of Sacramento and stay in San Diego where he hangs around the Texaco restroom wallowing in stall number two. Paid for by friends of Mark Watkins, Fred Littler, chairman. You're aboard the SSLA, Battleship of Southern California, in another exciting episode of Space Patrol. Last time at a court martial hearing, Captain Skippy was ordered to prove his bravery and loyalty by destroying the great oracle on the planet Nifrod. Dad, we're approaching the planet Nifrod right now. Okay, man. Take one last look. Your captain's about to be snuffed. Oh, Dad. I can already feel the cold hand of the Rim Reaper. Grim Reaper. Grim Reaper as he grabs at my shorts. Come on, Dad. I'm just glad that I lived a devoutly religious life and can stand there and look forward to those pearly gates. Mm. Rock of Dad, Dad, you've always been an, you've been an atheist. No, 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 no. I, ha I, I hate atheists. I love godly people. Oh. That's why I've dedicated my life to helping others. Oh, oh brother. Well, all right, all right, Dad, if you do die, yeah. here, why don't you take this with you? You're going to need what is it? Solar cane. That's real funny. <laughs> now, the first thing I'm telling St. Peter is about those dirty, filthy magazines under your bed. You keep your mouth shut when you're up there. Make me. I'll make you. <laughs> There's me. <laughs> ah!
All right, stop, stop, stop it, stop it. I don't want to stand before my maker with spittle all over me. All right. Now get your phaser and let's get going. I'm not going. What? This is your mission, pal, not mine. You mean you can stand there and watch your father walk into the most hazardous situation of his life? No. You're right, Dan. I can't right. stand here like that. More like it. I think I'll go have lunch. I'll you be... piece of garbage. Yeah. All right. Beam me down. I'll stay in touch with my communicator. All right, Dad. I'm beaming you down now. My gosh, what a cheap sound effect. What that is, isn't it, Dad? Hey, wait, wait. The great oracle's already been destroyed. What? The ground's covered with debris and precious jewels. You're kidding. Yeah, come on down. Help me pick them up. O okay, Dad. I'll be right there. I'm beaming myself down right now. Well, that is cheap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, here I am. Wait, wait, wait a second. Where, where's all the jewels in the, uh... Wait a second. <laughs> There's no jewels. <laughs> you stupid moron. Oh, beam me back up, Ensign! No! I override that order, and I'm still the captain. Oh, you disgusting piece of filth. <laughs> Tell it to the great oracle. <laughs> I'm listening! Oh, my God! Dad! Where, 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 where are you, sir? I'm everywhere! Oh. I hear! Oh. And I see all! Oh. No, Dad! Fall to your knees! Sure, 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 sure. I'll, I'll even wet my pants. I already did, Dad. Oh, 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 oh Dad, what are we going to do? I don't know. So you come to destroy the great oracle. No, no, uh, no, 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 way. We wouldn't do that. No, no. No, no. Liars! Why do you carry weapons? I'm going to need time for that one. Yeah. Uh, why don't we meet back here in about a week? How about a week, uh, yeah. Mr. Oracle? Okay? Silence! Uh, oh, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. If you wish to live, yeah. bring me food, uh, uh, sure. chicken, oh, yeah, yeah. bacon, Yeah. Dad, 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 yeah. Dad. Look, what? look, when what? the great oracle speaks, yeah. that ant over there moves its mouth. You're kidding. Yeah, look at that thing. Look, it's got something on its back. Oh. Let me take a look at that thing. Put me down! It's a miniature voice amplification system with a reverb uh, unit. Ah, for Pete's sakes. There, now try it, shorty. Please help! <laughs> oh, that's what it was, Dad! <laughs> This thing's been tricking people for years. <laughs> I can't believe it, Dad. What are we going to do with it? Well, I'm going to put it back down, and then we squash it. Ah! Spit on it, son. Wait, wait, let me... Wait, wait. wait. Oh, look at that thing, Dad. <laughs> wait. Yeah. Spit on it, son. Go ahead, spit on it. Atta boy, atta boy. <laughs> well, it's back to headquarters and probably a medal or two. For killing an ant? Son, by the time I'm through with the story, it's going to be the greatest heroics of all time. But, Dad, that's lying. So? Well, what about your deep religious beliefs? Religion? There ain't no God. Oh, for... oh Dad, well, the poisonous uh, snake right by your foot. Oh, God, please help me. God, please help uh, me. Dad, I was just kidding. That's real funny. <laughs> yeah. You little... <laughs> Join us again next time for another exciting episode of Space Patrol. Hello. Hello? Yes. Listen, I was listening a little while ago, you know, mm -hmm. and I heard you talking about uh, the terrible thing that you're going to have to do to your little child puppy. Yeah, if I don't get a buyer, I'm going to take him to the uh, pound. The pound and yeah. uh, have him uh, decompressed. Oh, that's, uh, listen, <clears throat> if it comes to that, you know, mm -hmm. where you uh, plan on taking him to that pound, Yeah. I mean, if, if those circumstances do arise, mm -hmm. uh, I, 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 I just I just don't know that I can stand to uh, put up with that. But would you would you do me a favor? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> if in fact you do plan on taking the, the doggy to the chow and, and having him decompressed, with, would you uh, call me first? Would you buy him? No, I, I just want to see him get snuffed. I'm kind of in a decompression. I see. As you have heard my political advertisements as I run currently for Inspector General of California. As many of you know, it is illegal to campaign or to solicit votes on Election Day. And adhering strictly to those rules, I will not break them in any fashion. I simply purchase the time on this very fine radio station to publicly thank all of my supporters, all of the workers, all of the people that diligently spent time during the past months working overtime to help elect me, Mark Watkins, for Inspector General. It is because of this that I have... Excuse me, there's somebody at the door. I'm, I'm awfully sorry. I'll be right. You two-bit rotten useless piece of garbage! What are you You're doing dead. in You're dead! <clears throat> this is Gary Ryan. If you'd like to put a dead man in office, vote for the pig that I just killed. Otherwise, vote for me. Gary I, Ryan I, for... Ryan! Yet, Mr. Take this, be quick. The election.
election for Inspector General of California has been canceled due to circumstances beyond our control. Dan Woman. Yeah, that's me, Dan Woman, private eye. And this is my city, Los Angeles. I don't have time to talk because I'm going to be on TV in just a minute. A couple of weeks ago, I was on People's Court and they're airing it today. Let's see if it's on yet. Welcome to People's Court. I'm Doug Llewellyn, and our first case today involves a private detective in which we call the sleuth that goofed. The plaintiff is this woman, Harriet Beasley, who hired the defendant, Dan Woman, private eye, to gather information on her husband, whom she believed was having an affair. Miss Beasley claims that Mr. Woman's inept handling of the case caused undue embarrassment and ruined her marriage. She's suing for her money she paid Mr. Woman and a thousand dollars in damages. And now, here comes Judge Wapner. I order in a court here. Everyone may be seated. I've reviewed the case in my chambers. I hope it was cooler there than this sweat box. I beg your pardon? Dead woman, private eye. I'm going to have to ask you to remain silent until the... Uh... Point of law here. I got a question and I know my rights. I ain't your typical jerkwater yokel. I know my TV law. Fire. What is your question, Mr. Woman? That Doug Llewellyn. Yes. He a fag? Oh, what? That's what I want to know. He looks like a fagball to me. Mr. Woman, this is neither the time nor the place. Means he's a homo. I know it. All right, now, Mr. Woman, that's quite enough. Miss yeah. Beasley. Yes, Your Honor? You charged that Mr. Woman was hired to follow your husband and he botched the case. How so, in your own words? Well, Your Honor, instead of tailing my husband in his car at a discreet distance, Mr. Woman hitched his car to the back of my husband's car and hoped he wouldn't notice. Mm. A lot of people tailgate in this city, you old skank bag. I was low on gas. And then instead of getting pictures of my husband with the other woman, he sketched them on a piece of notepaper. My camera was at the pawn shop. Besides, I was almost a commercial artist. I knew what I was doing. The bottom line, Your Honor, is that my husband found out I had hired a private detective, and he's left me. <laughs> he left you anyway, you snot-faced skag. <laughs> All right, Mr. Woman, I think I've heard enough. It's obvious that Mr. Woman's handling of this case was done so in an overt and unprofessional manner. Therefore, I award Miss Beasley the money she paid you, Mr. Woman, plus the $1,000 in damages she is asking. Uh, thank what? you, Your Honor. That's right. Thank you very much for being here. You call this a courtroom? I could get better justice from a lynch mob, you old dwarf lick. Uh, Mrs. Beasley, uh, were you satisfied with Judge Wapner's decision? Yes, Doug, I am. Thank you for being on People's Court. Mr. Woman, can we get a word from you? How about paid off? That dog-breathed old witch obviously bribed your crooked hotshot judge. I'm afraid I had to agree with the judge's ruling in this case. That's because you're a fagball. I'm not a fagball. Yeah, you are. I'm not a fagball. You're a fagball. I'm not either a fagball. Yeah, you're a fagball. I'm not a fagball. You're a fagball. You're a fagball. You're a you're a fagball. Fagball. You're a fagball. Gosh, the deterioration of America's judicial system is a sad sight. Well, at least people got to see how cool I was under pressure. I've come a long way since I wet my pants sitting on Buffalo Bob's lap on the Howdy Duty show. That's why I carry a loaded gun, and I urge you to do the same. I'm Dan Woman, Private Eye, and this is my city. Los Angeles. I've seen you take breakfast out here before. I'm not eating breakfast, Capricious Clarence. I'm watching Mumsy. What's she doing? Snorkel diving in the cesspool for a cufflink that I accidentally dropped into the toilet this morning. It must have been very valuable. Oh, no. Just a cheap imitation. But Mumsy was lounging around this morning and she looked like she wanted something to do. How thoughtful yes, of you to devise you. a means of keeping Mumsy entertained and at the same time seeing that she gets exercise. Yes. It takes her at least a minute and a half for her to dive to the bottom of the cesspool pool sludge. It has got to be very good for her lungs to hold her breath that long. Stanley, look! Yes, a monster from the deep is coming out of the cesspool! Oh, no, no, Clarence. That's Mumsy. The sludge has a tendency to stick to her body. But the stench! Yes. She smells as though she's covered with every foul-smelling thing that has ever passed through the Los Angeles sewer system. Yes. Ooh. I'm afraid that we'll have to hose her off, spray her with disinfectant, and suspend her from the tree over there and let her blow in the breeze and air out for a couple of days. Oh, that's a marvelous yes. idea. Yes. She can use the fresh air, too. Yes. Yes, yeah, she's nice can. idea. Mm -hmm. Thank you, loving brother Clarence. You're welcome. Oh, you were looking for me earlier. Yes, I was. Uh, Saturday night when we dressed up as Frick and Frack and went out trick-or-treating. Yes, Clarence, we I believe that was Sunday evening. Oh, you're absolutely That's quite right. all right. It was such a joyous occasion. Yes, it was. And we collected an awful lot of candy. Oh, we were so very fortunate. And you look so good as Frick. And you as Frack. Yes. The problem is we have so much. What shall we do with the excess? Well... Sugar is a very good source of energy. Yes. You know who is burning a lot of it right now. Yes. Mumsy! Mumsy! Surprise! Throw it in the cesspool and let her dive for it. Okay, Mumsy, here comes a Tootsie Pop! Go get it, Mumsy! Join us again next time for another loving episode of 
the Timmies. Mr. Ray D. Johnson. Hello, this is Ray D. Johnson. For 23 years, I made my living as a professional burglar, homicidal maniac, drug dealer, gun runner, extortionist, and arsonist. I cost this state over $16 million in damages, insurance claims, and court costs. I spent a total of two and a half years behind bars. Imagine that. I lived like a king for 23 years, and all it cost me was a little more than two years in the pen. What a great country we live in. It could only happen in America, and I'd like to thank all the liberals who made it possible. God bless each and every one of you for making my debt to society such a piece of cake. But Ray D., you might say, you can't vote. How about that? Oh, yeah? Well, neither can a lot of my victims. Besides, who needs to vote with crime laws like ours and with one policeman per 15,000 people? They're literally begging Ray D. Johnson to perform a Noguchi gagging kind of crime spree anyway. Let's go to the phone. Hello. Mr. Johnson, you're not going to rob me. I have the most sophisticated home burglary system on the market. Fine. And I'll just wait for you in the back seat of your car, steal your keys, drag you back inside, and perform a 418, a 609, a 532, an 826, and depending on how tired I am, I might throw in a 1016 or a 597. I see. At which point would I lose consciousness? Somewhere between the 418 and the 609. Oh, uh, thank you. Sure. Ray D. Johnson, you're on the air. Mr. Johnson, is Mesa drawback during a personal assault? Not if you're immune to it like me. Simply begin spraying it on your food until you build up a tolerance. Then the next time someone sprays it in your face, you can spit it back in theirs like a V8 juice. V8? Hey, I think I'll go strip a Chevy. Yeah. Ray D. Johnson, you're on the air. Yes, uh, Mr. Johnson, I was wondering if perhaps we could merge our talents with the goal of pulling off a rather large and profitable drug deal. I feel the marketability Get of this... off the phone, DeLorean. I don't work with people who try to buy drugs from the FBI. One more. You're on the air. Uh, say, say, uh, Mr. Johnson, uh, would you say the crime would be a good activity for a husband and wife? He made the both of us. I'm talking. You keep your mouth shut. You make me. What I'm going to do to you is going to be a crime. That's your big mouth talking. Yeah, I'll show you what my big yeah. mouth. To answer their question, generally speaking, women don't make good criminals. Even if you run into some bull dyke with the strength to clobber someone, after they ransack the house, they'd hang around tidying up, use the bathroom, and make a couple of calls. I worked with a woman once, and after our first case, I could see she was holding me back, so I turned her into the authorities for $250 reward. She died in the pen last week, two days before her birthday. Yeah, Mom would have been 68. Oh, well, this is Ray D. Johnson saying handgun registration is like a 65-year-old welfare recipient with a bad back. It ain't never going to work. Ciao. Uh, good morning, morning. Each and everyone and uh, to all of your sleazy listeners in the Southern California area. Yeah, right. Uh, Get delivery. We do one thing. Why well, one thing only. We pick it up now. And deliver it now. What do you guys got for me this morning? Okay, well, you know, we've been talking all week, uh, and uh, we said that if John didn't sell that uh, little chow puppy... Uh, yep. We were going to have to send it to the dog pound decompression chamber this little morning. Little decom action, little, huh? Yeah, All right. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, what's the verdict? Well, no, no sale. sale. No sale, yeah. you got to go by and pick it up. All uh, right, I was afraid of that. Uh-huh. So I've uh, had my most intelligent driver standing by. He will perform the duty. I don't want to oh, watch this job, for Pete's nice. sake. Yeah. Get over here, Duke. Hey, Duke, uh, we got something we want you to do here. We want you to pick up a dog. All right, pick up a dog at this dog, address right here. Dog, dog, that's a dog. Duke, dog? Duke, uh, do you know what a dog is? Uh, uh, what? Uh, four legs, four legs four and a little uh, curly tail. Curly, curly. You know, yeah, it, uh, it, it makes a uh, kind of a barking sound. Uh, like, like this, Duke. Uh, arr, arr. Uh, uh, no, no. Oh, he's going to pick up the patio furniture and take it to the decompression uh, chamber. Yeah, uh, what are you doing? Teeth, got teeth. Uh, uh, Burr, uh, hairy uh, thing, uh, you know. Uh, hurt, hurt. Dog, dog, yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 boy, yeah. Duke. Pick up the dog uh, uh, yeah, yeah. and take it to the decompression chamber at uh, the city pound, okay? Uh, yeah. Thank you very much, Duke. Uh, yeah. What do you want to be when you grow up? Spider-Man. All right, uh, Duke, take care. Uh, yeah, for him. How long did you want John London? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Cruel Carl Slur is this, is this? This is the uh, decompression chamber at the dog pound. I'm the decompressor. Are you by any chance related to evil Roy Slinkman, owner of the building? Brother. Oh, no. My brother. Oh, no. Now listen, now listen very carefully. 
The state makes me make a phone call to the owner. Are you John London? Yes, I'm John London. <laughs> this is the one last phone call. Is it really what you want to have the one? Shut them dogs up over there. I'm beating you over here. Second All right, uh, Carl, Carl, it's not what I want, but it's what has to be. I'm afraid uh, nobody wants the dog. I'm going to have to have him put to sleep. Snuff the mutt. Snuff the pup. <laughs> All right, let's go. Uh... I like puppies. All right. Do I you? don't get many puppies in here. <laughs> I'm going to put the machine on slow so I can savor this. <laughs> oh, Carl, for yeah. Pete's sake. Now, uh, hang on a second, Carl. Yeah. Hang on a second. Uh, hello, Magic 106. I'll buy you, I'll buy you, I'll buy the doggy. Who is this? This is Stevie Swenson, and I'll pry, I don't want to see that doggy die. Well, I'll th buy well, thank you. Thank you very much, Stephen. I it's yes, sir. It's five hundred dollars. I could come up with that amount, no problem. I'll just want to save that doggy's life. Well, I certainly appreciate your uh, boy. This is I guess obviously this situation has touched you, and I appreciate yes, it. Stevie, what do you do for a living? I am the general manager of the Gay and Lesbian Community Center. There you are. Yes. What would you? Stevie, what would you do with that dog? I would keep that little doggy right here in the center with me as a role model. Mm -hmm. it, it, the, the little doggy would kind of be making a statement. A statement? What would, yes. that, what would that statement be, Stevie? I was on the brink of death and found life. I see. I see. Please, well, I'll thank buy you. the dog. Okay. Yes, yes. All right, all right. Hang on just, just a second, thank Stevie. Thank you. Okay. Oh, brother. Hello, Carl? Yeah, this is Carl. <laughs> Go ahead with the snuffing. Get her. Get her. Ah, right. yeah. puppy, that's gonna be great. I'm looking forward. It's better for him this way, ladies and gentlemen. Trust me. I know what I'm doing here. The story of the Cartwright family and their struggle in the old west. Father, can I see you for a moment, please? Sure. What is it, little Joe? That's it. My name. I mean, really, father, little Joe. It's so blue color. It's it's bad enough that I have a brother named Hoss. I mean, when we're in town at a cocktail lounge, you know. That's a saloon. Uh, whatever. I have to say, Hoss, don't drink the spittoon. Oh, could just die. All my friends start snickering. Those uh, friends of yours, little Joe, seem a little uh, different, you know. Yes, they are. For one thing, they're clean. Uh, maybe so, but they don't look like they could, uh, you know, stay in a saddle all day cutting out cattle. I should hope not. Anyway, if it's all right with you, I'd like to change my name to Sergio. It has a certain continental flair that's missing in little Joe. No, it's not all right with me. Your mother and I picked that name. Off a circus poster? I mean, I could sound like a car. Carnival act, Little Joe and his trained bears. Besides, Sergio and Dwayne sounds so good. Dwayne? Who, who's Dwayne? My best friend. Oh, I guess I forgot to tell you. Dwayne and I are going into business together. What, what kind of business here? Decorating the inside of barns. They're such ghastly places, don't you agree? I like barns. Uh -huh. uh, besides... No Cartwright is going to be decorating anything unless it's a cow's rump with our brand. Oh, pooper dinks. And another thing mm -hmm. here. Are those the blue jeans I bought you the other day? Uh, yes. Well, how come they're still tied around your rear end? I had Su Ling take them in. It's a fashion look. All the boys in Europe are wearing them like this. Well, you look like a dead gum girl from your backside. Well, thank you, Father. <laughs> Adam, what's wrong with Haas? Why is his mouth bleeding? One of the boys smeared a barbed wire fence with dog food to see if Haas would eat it. He did. Haas, you big boob! I'm dying, Paul. I'm dying. Let me eat my last meal, please. Shut up! Oh. Now, little Joe, take Haas to town and have the doctor stitch up his mouth. All right, but let me quaff my hair and change clothes first. By the way, Adam, love you in black. Yeah, sure, little Joe. Gosh, he's sick, Pa. Isn't he sick? He's sick. He's sicker than me. Isn't Nobody's he? sicker than you, Adam, but 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 you're good sick. He's weird sick. Yeah. Ever since that lightning struck him, he's been, well, um... Different. Yeah, different. Yeah. Sorry. Haas, quit eating the couch over there! I'm so hungry! Let's go. Wait a minute, Mr. Wear your boots. I don't want to wear them. They make my feet sweat. What in blazes do you have on? Those are Ma's high heels, Pa. So? They fit. Gosh, he's sick weird. Yeah. Haas, quit eating the rug over there. I'm oh, hungry. Hot, dead, dumb, oh, Haas. Oh, I don't oh, give a oh, so Join us again next time for Bonanza. 
outer space adventure aboard the SSLA, Battleship of Southern California, in another exciting episode of Space Patrol. Good morning, man. You can rest easy now. Your mighty captain's on the bridge. Well, we're <laughs> Son, come here a second. Yeah, Dad? What's wrong with those mucus-licking morons? Well, we're out of food, Dad. The, the men haven't eaten in two days now. Tough! Nobody said this ship was an all-night Denny's. Yeah, yeah, but the rumor is you've got a secret supply of high-quality grub yourself. Why would anybody think that? Because you're 20 pounds overweight, you got food stains all over your uniform, and a half-eaten turkey leg sticking out of your back pocket. Oh, <laughs> yeah. well, I think uh, I better clear it up with the men. Okay, okay. good Turn idea. on the uh, ship's PA system. I want everybody to hear this. Okay, it's on, Dad. <clears throat> Attention, men, you women, and certainly last, least, and ugliest, you hustle pods. As you know, we're out of food. Not all of us! I said we, because just like all of you slop-sucking weasels, strike that, strike that, <laughs> like all you fighting men, I'm out of food, too. Oh, sure! It's true! Now, the fact that I've apparently been gaining weight lately is a complete misconception. I have what doctors call bloatus overworkedus. It's a swelling of the belly cavity caused by long hours of laboring like a field worker above and far beyond the call of duty. The sad fact is I'm so close to being anorexia that the thought of eating more than an ounce of freeze-dried fruit makes my bloated belly want to heave. That same bloated belly I got from working like an itinerant fruit picker on amphetamines. I may already pointed that out. <clears throat> now as to the stains on my suit... Some have jumped to the preposterous conclusion that they were caused from food items. The truth is, last night I bludgeoned to death a maggotite spy who had stolen into my room. These stains are the result of that merciless and albeit juicy beating I administered. As to the turkey leg sticking out of my back pocket, this is the latest camouflaged weapon device sent from headquarters. The enemy captures you, steals what he thinks is your food, takes one bite, and his head plays hide-and-seek with his body. If you think I'm lying, I'll let anyone here take a bite. Nah, no, no. Sure. No, 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 no. All right. No, not us, not us. All right, all right. <clears throat> Finally, <clears throat> you might ask, what happened to the food? Well, don't for a second believe I've got it packed on a space shuttle where I'll fly it down to the Labraloids and trade it for whiskey, because it just ain't true. A full investigation is already underway. And anyway, a new food shipment is due in three days. Now, till then... <clears throat> Son, turn off the audio to the engine room. It's off, Dad. Till then, we can fry up a couple of the hoozle pods down in the engine room for you. No, 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 I don't blame you. I don't blame you. Well, hang in there and try not to think about the mouth water and succulent meals your moms used to make. No, no. Captain Skippy, over and up. Well, that should hold him. Oh, I sure hope so, Dad. Uh, listen, uh, I have an appointment with the uh, Labraloids to uh, discuss uh, future trade relations. I'll be back kind of late. You want me just to beam you over? No, no, no. I'll just uh, take the shuttle. I, uh, I could uh, use a drive, okay? What are you looking at? You fat piece of garbage. Listen, I'm uh, late. I can't I talk about can't it. Can't believe it. I gotta get I going. I can't believe it. I gotta be Join us again up. next time for another exciting episode of Space Patrol. Yeah, that's me, Dan Woman, Private Eye. And this is my city, Los Angeles. Funny business this private investigating is. Many people have devoted their lives to the science of Seamusology, and for the most part, it's still a mystery. Sure, it has its absolutes, its facets you can always depend on, like knowing that a right cross followed by a knee in the groin is going to settle a guy down, or knowing that when you whip out your gun and it goes click, click, as sure as Nancy Reagan has her underarm shaved by a minority, you forgot to load the darn thing. But in general, it's an open mouth, drooling on your shirt kind of business. Take last week. I got to use a line I've been waiting 17 years to say. I was in my office discussing politics on a very sophisticated level with Otis Williams, who's in the shoe relustification business, when in walks a client. So, uh, tell me, Otis, uh... Have you heard who won the governor's race last week? Oh, no, I haven't, sir. No, I haven't. Yeah, me either. Uh, what do you think about the Middle East situation? I don't know, sir. I really don't know about, uh -huh. much about that subject. No, I don't know. My feeling exactly. Uh, say, was uh, Reagan re-elected last week? I believe he was, sir. Uh, uh, I do believe he I was. That's what I think, too. I, think, but I, I believe he was really. Really not too sure. Excuse me, why are you Monsieur Woman? No, 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 no ma'am. That, 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 that'd be Mr. Woman right there. Hmm? Yeah, I'm Dan Woman, private eye. All right, Otis, that should do it. Uh, th 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 thank, you, thank you very much, Mr. Woman. Yeah. You, you did a real good job in my shoes. Yeah, yeah, thank you okay. very much. Uh, 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 take care, my friend. Uh, what can I do for you, Frenchie? Say, 
You look awful familiar. I am Pia is a girl a woman with practically no talent in the rich husband. Pia is a gunsel. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so why are you coming to me? I have heard, Mr. Rouman, that you are a man with, uh, au oh, la France, how you say? Guts. Uh, no, 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 a man with, um... Grits. Uh, no, a man with, uh, no scruples, oui. Oh, well, uh, I got some, but they're for sale. What do you, what do you need? Um... Uh, a man has been sending me some very frightening letters. He says if he ever gets me, he will do cruel and terrifying things to me. Uh, I want you to be my bodyguard, s'il vous plaît, while I am in town and if necessary, kill this man if he tries to abduct me, comprenez-vous? Uh -huh. Here is a $500 retainer. <laughs> you just hired yourself a bodyguard. Oh, uh, by the way, a free shoe shine comes with every purchase. Oh, not right now. Muchas gracias. Uh. That night, I stationed myself outside her luxury high-rise condo she rented. And like a coiled snake, I stood alert, waiting to strike. Ah! Oh, what, what, what? Hey, 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 hey! You put that rat brain broad down now! It was too late. He drug her into a car and sped off. Realizing there was no way I could run 60 miles an hour, I looked around for a vehicle and spotted a cab. Uh, where to, pal? Are you ready for this? Yeah. Follow that car. Hey, 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 I've been waiting years to hear that one. <laughs> the kind of neat, huh? Yeah, it's neat. Want me to say it again? Yeah, do it again to me. <laughs> Follow that car. Hey, you got it, mister. Let's go get him. There we go. Come on. I will. Come on. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to say it. Come on. I will. I'm trying. I'm Come trying. on. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. Well, we never did get it started, and that was the last I or anyone has seen a Pia is a gunsel. Only a sick mind could even begin to imagine what she must have or still is going through. Otis came up with a couple of suggestions, but I couldn't repeat them on the radio. Well, I made a quick 500 bucks, but I lost a client. Ah, uh, well, the way I figured, if God had wanted me to win every case, he'd have given me a three-digit IQ. That's because I'm Dan Woman, Private Eye. And this is my... The new Leave It to Beaver, starring Jerry Mathers as the Beaver. through the window. Hey, 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 keep it down, creep. Where's Wally? He's at the hospital. Hey, Sam. He's donating one of his kidneys to a blind kid. I hate him when he does stuff like that. Gosh, I hate him. Yeah, I guess. So what are you doing here at three in the morning? I, uh, I want you to keep something for me. What? <laughs> this gun. Gosh! Now, look, look, look. Just, just hold on till I come and get it. What's it for? I, uh, <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I'm uh, gonna give it to my dad for his birthday, and I, uh, <laughs> and I, and I don't want him to find it first, okay? Oh, 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 how come it's warm and smoking? Oh, I, uh, <laughs> tested it at a police firing range first to make sure it worked. <laughs> oh, okay, sure, I'll keep it for you, Eddie. Will you like me better? Oh, sh oh, sure, you, you bet I will, Beeb, you bet I will. And stop calling me toilet shorts in front of my friends? Uh, th that's a deal, Beeb, uh, thanks, uh, see you, see you later. Okay, Eddie. See you later. Gosh, a real life gun. Let's go on it. Oh my gosh, Jude, Jude. What is it, liquor lord? The unplanned pregnancy in there. What's his name? Beaver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got a gun. I think he's gonna kill us. Oh no! What do we do? Call the zookeeper. No, no. The uh, the, the trash men. No, no, the no. The police. Yeah, not the police. Yeah, yeah. Hurry, hurry. Please hurry and call them. While you're doing that, I'll stand here picking my nose and pull out my undershorts. Oh, they're on the way. That must be them. Wait, wait. You just called and that's already them? Yeah. <laughs> this really is fiction. Uh, oh, let's go downstairs and meet him, okay? Oh, get up, Rum Rum. Oh. All right, are you the people that uh, called for the police? Yeah, you stupid pig. What? I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just used to call you that in my car, you know, that I... Oh, <laughs> shut up. Yes, officer, our son is in his room with yeah, a gun. Uh, yeah, yeah, guy, he's delirious. Uh, he's been threatening our lives. All right, what window is his? That one. All right, Joe, fire a tear gas pellet in that window right up there. All right. All right, this will take care of it. All right, he should be coming at any time now. <laughs> shoot him, shoot him, little you kill him. All right, son, drop that gun. <laughs> What's going on here? Hey, Jim, it's a 22, just like the one that was used in that senseless shooting a few minutes ago. You're right. Good heavens, a vicious psychic. Psycho. Kill him, kill him. We'll say it was his self-defense. Oh, no, that won't be necessary. We'll take him in and book him. Let's go, son. But, but the gun belongs to Eddie. 
Eddie. Who's Eddie? The, the, the nicest guy in the world, officer. It's just a pathetic attempt to blame an innocent person. All right, let's go, son. Come on, get in the car. Let's uh -oh, go. Oh, I hope he gets the gas chamber. Hey, that's something. You raise them right, you shower them with love, and what do they do? They get a gun and try to shoot you in your sleep. Oh, he's trash. <laughs> Join us again next week for the new Leave it to Beaver. The story of the Cartwright family and their struggle in the old west. Adam, little Joe, Huss, get in here. <laughs> Hi, Pa. Hi, <laughs> Pa. <laughs> Sit down, we've got problems. Oh, no, we're out of food. <laughs> no, we're not out of food, you big idiot. Father, is this going to take long? Dwayne is swinging by in a few minutes, and we're going to look at some carriages. Carriages? Yes. You see, Dwayne develops a horrid skin condition in the sun, so we need some covered protection on our outings. I don't want to hear about those outings. I don't want to hear about them. But let me tell you something, Mr. Mm. Cartwright. Don't ride around in carriages. Oh, that's right. We're rough, tough, shoot 'em up cowboys. <laughs> I keep forgetting. Carriages. I, I'd sooner go around selling dog food. What's it? I'm hungry! <laughs> Shut up! Now, we got a problem, and I want you to figure out the solution. <laughs> Why don't you just tell us what to do like always, Pa? No, Adam, it's time you boys start making some major decisions on your own. I made a biggie a few years back. Yeah, and I think we'll all live to regret that one, little Joe. Now, look, here's the problem. Huss, what do you got in your mouth over there? Nothing! Nothing! Take that doily out of your food hole, you idiot! I'm so hungry! Shut up! <laughs> now, listen. The Thompson spread south of us has been diverting the river into their own pond, not leaving us with enough water for our own cattle. Now, you figure out, boys, what do we do? Hush, you go first. Uh, uh, let's eat all their cattle so they'll move away, Pa. No, you big boob. They have over 300 head. It'll just take me a week. No, no, no. no. Little <laughs> Joe, what do you think? Why don't we sell our ranch and move into a town home? Sell the Ponderosa? Mm. This is the dead gum Garden of Eden. Why do you think I named my first offspring Adam? Where's Eve, Pa? Well, I think little Joe's working on that one there, Hoss. Thank you, Father. All right, Adam. What do you say we do? <laughs> Let's go up to their house, burn them out of house and home, shoot all their livestock, and torture their women. Bingo! Oh, how barbaric. Good going, Adam. That's good thinking. All right. You boys go with Adam and get going right now. Come on, boys. Take off. Take off. A few hours later... <laughs> I'm back, Pa. How'd it go up there, Adam? <laughs> we burned down their house, yeah. shot all their livestock, Good. and tortured their women folk. Hello, boy. Good going, Adam. Now, uh, where's Hoss and little Joe? <laughs> the last time I saw Hoss, he was wrestling with some vultures for a goat carcass. A uh, dead gum <laughs> idiot. <laughs> and little Joe found out that one of their women folk was a size eight, so he's going through her wardrobe. Oh, <laughs> gosh, Adam. Gosh, he's sick. Yeah, me too, right, Pa? Yeah, 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 yeah. You're sick. But you're good sick. Yeah. He's weird sick. That's yes. weird, boy. That's weird. Right, but you didn't Join that. us again yeah. next time for Bonanza. Now for another outer space adventure aboard the SSLA, Battleship of Southern California, in another exciting episode of Space Patrol. Doc, how is he? Not too good, Captain. But that's always been the case. I'm speaking medically here, Captain. Oh, I see. Well, is it all right if I talk to him? Well, just for a couple of minutes. Hey, no problem. Past a couple of minutes, he bores me to death anyway. All right, uh, go on in, Captain. Hey, there he is. <laughs> Hi, Ted. I just got back, son, and I heard the good news. Good news? Yeah, you were seriously injured in battle. That's good news? Look, there's nothing more valiant than to walk around with an open ooze and wound. It's the ultimate medal of honor. Okay. It's a neon sign that says, I was there, mister. I took one for my country. Yeah. And considering your slimy, gutless actions in the past, your stupefying acts of jaw-dropping cowardice, your nauseating, gritless performances that make my innards swell up till I want to... <laughs> in your face. Ow. Oh, sorry, son. Gosh, Dad. Anyway... I'm proud of you, my little war hero. Uh, thanks, Dad. Thanks a lot. <laughs> so, uh, what happened? You take some shrapnel from a fragmentation bomb? No. X-ray burns from a photon torpedo. Uh-huh. No. Laser lacerations from a particle beam blast. No. Uh, what was it, then? A uh, severe electrical shock from an exposed wire. Exposed wire? Uh -huh. Well, son, up there on the bridge, the only wires are under the navigation console, so I don't... Wait a minute. 
You were cowering under the console and got electrocuted. But Dad, I... You pathetic little milksop, injured while cringing. Dad, no, I... My gosh, how devastatingly hideous. Well, Dad, see the... Well, I'll tell you one thing, Sally. I'm not going to waste the ship's energy keeping your yellow carcass alive. I'm pulling the plug on your life support system. No, Dad, please don't... Adios, wimp. What's going on in here? I yanked this cord, Doc. This ship ain't no wuss, Shelter. He's a coward. He deserves a crook. Coward? Yeah. Captain, huh? your son dove under the console to save an injured crewman. If it weren't for that quick thinking action, Ensign Jenkins would have died. He dove to uh, save a... Yes! Angelus. Make me. Two words. Two tiny words that are Dan Woman's key to excitement. I thrive on excitement and turmoil. My job as a two-fisted, iron-jawed P.I. generally offers enough action to satiate my desire as a thrillmeister. But when it doesn't, and I need a fix of a boot-banging explosion of fury, I use those two magical words to unlock the door to gratify and turbulence. And let me tell you, when Dan Woman looks you in the eye, slowly opens his mouth, and through gritted teeth says those two words, it's the same awe-filled, terror-tingling feeling as trying to suck the bullets out of the barrel of a cocked gun. That's another one of my hobbies, by the way. I'll save that for some other time. But take last Thursday. I was in my favorite lounge across from the plasma center where I had just donated a pint. And since they forced me to take the $16 they only offered their high-grade customers, I decided to refresh myself with a libation. No sooner was I in the joint when this blonde glues her hazels on my bod. So naturally, I approached her table. Can't keep your eyes off me, can you? Well, it's very rare that you see a guy with a foot-long wiener scotch taped to his tie. I don't like carrying lunch sacks. I like to keep my hands free, so I wear my lunch to work. I got the buns in my shoes, sack of Fritos glued to my back, and a couple of Hostess cupcakes pasted on my chest. Oh, good. I thought you were taking hormone shots. By the way, that bulge under my coat ain't no meatball sandwich. It's a fully loaded gun. I'm Dan Woman, Private Eye. That's my girl you're talking to there, mister. Hey, listen, uh, why don't you have the bartender fix you a pink squirrel and leave us alone? I'm only going to say this once, mister. Listen real closely. Beat it! I smiled, looked at the girl, slowly untaped the weenie from my tie, rose to my full height, looked him square in the eyes and said, Make me. My pleasure! His first punch was an uppercut to my rib cage that landed high, squashing the cupcake into my chest. I did everything I could to protect the other half of my dessert. I was carrying too much food to effectively counter his punches, and finally, weakened from giving blood, I collapsed to the floor. <laughs> Come on, babe, let's go! Look, he's wearing food all over his body. He's a pervert! He's sick, he's sick, he's sick, he's sick! Not one single patron offered assistance, and while I laid there unconscious for over three hours, I was picked clean by a bunch of ants and a couple of silverfish. Because of those two words, I lost the girl, my dignity, my lunch, and three hours out of my life. But the very next day, I broke even when I sent him to a whiner who asked me to give him a dime. I watched with pleasure as he ashamedly and with great fear slunk back into the alley. He was so nervous, his cane sounded like a typewriter as it hit the pavement. Well, win some, lose some. Give those words a try yourself sometime. But if you value your life, never say them to my face. Because I'm Dan Woman, Private Eye. And this is my city, Los Angeles. Ah, we have, uh, haven't opened it yet. Uh, tear it open, Rod. You want me to tear it open? You're going to light okay. up your life. It's a special recording that I've sent you. You have an exclusive worldwide breakout today. Oh, hey, a record. Bob Dickey does a special 15-minute version of Feelings. Now, the record, I've edited down yeah. just to a couple of minutes for special oh, airplay. Good. I know that's how the radio good. business works. Yeah, well, Gotta get those commercials in there. Can't play those 15-minute records. Now, I know you're asking, Ron, you're asking, Bob, why? Why this time? You've sung Feelings so many times. Ron, I want you to play that record. And I thank you and your beloved audience. What a great crowd you are this morning, too, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, you're looking great out there. Okay, come on, Bob. We have Any out of Good. Got a Bob. few. Got a... Anyway, Ron, I think that you're going to notice a special, a special feeling as I sing. The crowd and I became a spiritual union. Oh, really? We became one, Ron, during Ooh. this record. And I think you're going to sense the tie that I haven't noticed since Frank Sinatra sang My Way in New York City. Uh-huh. Okay. At, uh, at the special Madison Square Garden right. performance. I think you're going to get that same kind of texture to it. All right. Give the record a play, Ron. All right, let me let's, uh, put it on here right now and see what we got. Hang on. Hey, haven't you been a super, super audience for Mr. Bob Robert Dickey here tonight? You've been so good, ladies and gentlemen, that I'm going to treat you to kind of an unusual, unusual experience for you. Something that I'm sure you'll cherish for the rest of your, your disgusting lives. I have a 15-minute special version of Feelings. Oh, no! 
Sam on the piano. Hit it for me, partner. Feeling nothing more than Let me tell you something. To get of that special version, mm -hmm. I don't think I'm overstating it when I would say those people would go out and kill for me. Yeah, I, I, I think they were real close to a killing there. Yeah. I really do, Bob. That's your record, uh, Ron. Break it for me. Give me some gold, partner. Yeah. Ten four. Sure. Really stupid my segments on 60 Minutes are. I mean, really noticed. I mean, even if you can get past my whiny, nasally voice and my know-it-all attitude, you're still left with two or three minutes of lowbrow observations. Why do you think it's a few minutes with Andy Rooney? It's because a whole hour with me, and you'd get that same nauseous motion sickness feeling astronauts get on the space shuttle. I mean, let's be honest. Only a moron could possibly notice the things I do. I've always been like that. When I was in high school, for instance, while the other boys were playing sports, I was in the principal's office asking him why the football team was called the George Washington Tigers. Since, to my knowledge, George Washington never had much to do with Tigers. And even if he did, the school didn't own a Tiger. And if the coach really wanted his players to act like Tigers, then they should tear out their opponents' throats with their teeth, drag their bodies under the bleachers, and eat their carcasses. He said I was weird. That's what my wife said on our wedding night. I asked her if she had noticed the Do Not Disturb sign on the door. I don't like being disturbed any time, but it seemed kind of strange that after paying $85 a night, that I'd have to put up signs begging the hotel staff to leave me alone. Then I mentioned that her French lingerie looked like a bunch of black doilies that my Aunt Helen used to slap all over her furniture. She got upset said I was weird. At least back then I was interesting weird. Now I'm just boring weird. I mean, look at my last three segments on 60 Minutes. Three weeks ago, I did two and a half minutes on the black specks and Fritos. Two weeks ago, I did three minutes on the colored rings around tube socks. And last week, I bottomed out doing four full minutes on snot. After that show, Mike Wallace came up to me and said I was weird. I said, Mike, have you ever noticed that you have the same hairstyle as Howdy Doody? He said, who died and made you Inspector General of the Universe? I heard Mike's going around telling Andy Rooney jokes to minorities. I hope that's not true. Anyway, to make me more interesting, I'm going to go out, get a gun, and kill someone. Then I'll become a black Muslim. That should make me more interesting. Of course, if I get caught by the police, I'd feel kind of sorry for my cellmate. I mean, 15 to 20 with Andy Rooney could drive a guy to ask for solitary confinement. I haven't had a chance to read your book yet, Phil. I am an avid golfer. I've stated on the air on a number of occasions that I believe I could beat Jack Nicklaus if he was to wear my mother's high heel shoes. I've heard that uh, rumor, yes. Yes. Uh, what is uh, your book? Why is it different, Phil? Well, it's uh, if you use my book, uh, you will develop a mental form of golf. Uh, in other words, you will apply my mental ideas and thereby lower your score. So this is not so much in, in relation in, in, in regards to your actual swing, the oh, no. physical aspect. This no. is more of the... It's a mental, mental aspect. Give us, all right, what would be one of your mental techniques to all lower right, your uh, score? Let, let's say you're uh, standing over the ball. All right. Okay? Okay. Now, now you don't think while you're standing over this ball, do not think I'm going to take this little ball and I'm going to knock it up on the green. You don't. Do not think that. What do you think, Phil? Think the ball tried to rape your mother and you now have the opportunity to knock its head off with your club. Pete's sakes, Phil. That's, that's a little <laughs> sick, isn't it? Well, I, it, it, it helps with the follow-through to swing. You All can right. swing much harder if, yeah. if that's your thought. All right, so you right. so after you uh, you knock it's knock the, the okay. raper's head off uh -huh. there. Okay, then and, what? And uh, you have misaimed somewhat, and the uh, ball has gone into a trap. All right, what do you, you do now? take your wedge, you go down there, you find it's half buried. Mm -hmm. You don't think I have to hit behind it and thereby throw it up on the green nice and easy. What do you think? It's Fidel Castro, and you're going to give him a frontal lobotomy. Fidel Castro, yeah. the sand there for... Uh -huh. You could 
Tear the front of his head off? That's exactly all right, right, Phil. All right, all right. All right. What happens? You got the flag pin. Okay. You're aiming at the flag pin. You're aiming right. at the flag pin. Think of that flag pin as a tall, skinny guy that's selling drugs to your 12-year-old sister, and you want to drill that ball right between his eyes. Phew, Phil. Phil. It's the thought that has to go through your mind in order to properly get that ball to its destination. Please say. All right, uh, all right. Let's say for some wild chance it's on the green. The okay. most, probably the most precise uh, segment of the game of golf, the, right. the putt. This is the all-important segment. Mm -hmm. You stand over the ball. Yeah. Now, you don't think, I have to put that ball in the hole. What do you think? That's not your thought. Your what? thought is, if I do put that ball in that hole with this putt, uh -huh. it will detonate 172 ICBMs and blow every vodka second coming off the face of the earth. Oh, for Pete's sake. Yeah. yeah. Okay, then after you sink the ball, you rake your cleats across the green. You just stomp all over oh, everything. Man. You grab your hand. You bust that stick across uh, uh, your knee. Uh, right. There you come across. You're at 18. All right, okay, Phil, sum it up here. <laughs> In summary, golf is an enjoyable, leisurely game that uh, should be enjoyed by the whole family. Thanks for being with us, Phil. He's that dorky little dwarf. Tattoo! Here, that. Here I am. You're going to hit me, right, Bob? You're going to hit me. How very perceptive, my freakish little friend. No, Bob, please. But I'm not going to hit you with my hands. No, Bob? No, Tattoo. I have developed back trouble bending over to reach that stupefying, ugly face of yours. So, I have glued brass knuckles to my kneecaps, and I will simply knee you in the face with them like this. Abbott! And this. Abbott! There, that's better. <laughs> You know, Tattoo, I'm a very lucky man. You are, Bob. Most people have to pay several dollars at a carnival to see a freak show. I have one running around free on my island. Yes, yeah, Bob. The reason I need you in the face like this, Tattoo, oh, is because a Mrs. Luetta Paxton complained that during her fantasy of singing with the Metropolitan Opera, she opened her mouth. Someone swung by on a rope, threw a handful of dead moths into it. Now you understand why I need you in the face? Yes, Bob. Do you think throwing a handful of dead moths into her mouth is funny, Tattoo? No, Bob. Are you sure? Yes, I'm positive, Bob. Well, actually, it is rather amusing, <laughs> Tattoo. <laughs> I guess you're right, Bob. It is kind of funny. Oh, so you think it is funny? Oh, you're a filthy little, tiny, rotten little freak. Oh, you're good. Oh. 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 My back, Tattoo. <laughs> I'm sorry, Bob. I'm sorry for being so oh, short. Now then, Tattoo, we have several guests arriving today. First, Mr. October, Reggie Jackson, will be here. As you know, Mr. Jackson was anything but impressive during the playoffs. He has lost his confidence and wishes to regain it. How, Bob? How will you do that? We are going to make it easy for him to hit the ball by dressing you up as a baseball and firing you out of a cannon. No, oh, no, Bob. Mr. Jackson should have no trouble hitting you with his 44-ounce bat as you whisk by at 75 miles an hour. Oh, please, Bob, no. Our next guest is horror film producer Brian De Palma. What is his fantasy? Bob. To film Halloween 4, Night of the Burning Midget. Oh, no, Bob! You'll be an instant star. Grotesque creatures like you and E.T. are in right now. Wait, Bob! Then George Duke Majin will stop by. What's his fantasy? He wants a picture of Tom Bradley torturing a young boy with a hot poker. How, Bob? How will you get that? Well, Mr. T, wearing a wig, will play the part of Mr. Bradley, and you, Tattoo, will play the part of the youngster. Oh, no. Mm. What about the hot poker? We have to have some realism, Tattoo. Wait, Bob! No! Finally, the explosive martial arts expert and temperamental star Eric Estrada will come by. Why, Bob? His producer feels that Eric is on the verge of another blow-up and wants Eric to release his tension. How? Well, Tattoo, I took the liberty of signing your name to an awfully ugly letter in which you insult Mr. Estrada's race, acting ability, and immediate family members. Oh, no. That wasn't so bad, Tattoo. But when you openly challenged him to a fist fight, saying he doesn't have the guts to show up, that's when you went a little too far. Oh, Bob, please. I don't understand why you get yourself into these messes, Oh, Bob, please, I don't want... Come back again real soon for another visit to... Catalina Island. Answer the phone. Uh, I, uh, I, don't, I don't think we've got to go into that. No, 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 you did. I called you and you picked up the phone and you said what? Uh, I said, uh, Georgia, is that you? <laughs> well, that was interesting. Yeah, well, yeah, there was nothing to it. Uh, I didn't mean nothing there. See, I got a guy, my niece's name is Georgia, and I was expecting her to call. Hey, uh, John? John? Yeah, Terry. Terry, it's Terry Donahue. Yeah, Terry. I want to, uh, first of all, congratulate you on your uh, great win over, uh, over uh, who was that school that you played, Notre Dame? Yeah. Uh, you know, it's too bad you couldn't have played a real team on your last game, but it was a good victory, and uh, hearty congratulations from all of the Bruins. Yeah, well, uh, thanks, thanks a lot, Terry. Thanks a lot. And, uh, congratulations uh, to UCLA and your Bruins there. Uh, you're going to the Rose Bowl. Yes, uh, we sure are, uh, John. Our season's going to be a little longer than yours, and, of course, uh, we will be on national television, and that's something that's uh, too bad you couldn't have experienced in your final year. Hey, listen.
Yes, uh, my final year. I, it's okay, it's over, right? It's over. I, I ain't going to be teaching no more football to, to USC, okay? That's true. John, I think you made the right decision. You know, you have had a long and uh, mildly successful career, and I think you made the right decision of getting out when you can't take the pressure anymore. You know, too many coaches hang on there, and they really have something serious happen to them. And it was obvious to everyone that uh, you were on the uh, verge of a mental breakdown. Uh, you could barely stand on your feet to the four quarters. So you're making the right decision when it becomes too much for you and you don't have enough guts to hang in there. You should bail out like you did. Yeah, yeah. Well, Put your tail between your legs and just run on home. Let me tell you something, Donahue. Let me tell you no, something. No, I'm listening. Okay. I, Coach Robinson, succeeded in everything I've tried to do throughout my career. Like eating? Oh, you're real funny. You're real funny. <laughs> you're real funny, you little wimp. I've been to the Rose Bowl a number of times. Yeah, who got you the tickets? <laughs> I went in there to play with my Trojans. My I have, Trojans I played in that football game a number of times. I've heard you play with those Trojans. <laughs> you fat pervert. Let me tell you something, Donahue. Every time we went into the Rose Bowl, we went in there feet first. We didn't back in there by way of the biggest fluke in college football history. <laughs> I'll tell you something else, too. If I had to get there that way, I'd wear a paper sack over my head and I'd have the football team doing the same thing, you useless piece of garbage. Let's talk about back in, huh? Yeah. If it wasn't for a bad official's call, Notre Dame would have beaten you, you piece of snot. Get out of here. He didn't carry that ball yeah. into the end zone, hey, you how old... Much, how much did you pay uh, to, uh, to, to throw that game, huh? You old fat dwarf yeah, Well, well, thank you, gentlemen. Yeah, uh, you Terry, good luck to you in the Rose Bowl against over. Michigan. And John, uh, good yeah, luck in a couple of seasons when you take over coaching for the Rams. Here we are getting pretty soon. Oh, I'm really looking forward to it. Wait, outside your window, dear? Yes. On that pole with a walker going to it? What is that? It's a, it's a bomb. It's going to explode again. We're going to die right away. We're going to get killed. We're going to go to the bus. Wait, wait, everybody. That's not, that's not a bomb. It's just a speaker. You're supposed to put that on your window, Dad. Oh, thank goodness. I thought we were gunners. <laughs> Me too. Oh, boy. Mommy, Daddy, how come there are cars all around us? Oh, now we're surrounded. There's no way out. We're going to be dead. We're going to kill us. They're going to get other cars and beat us to death. <laughs> Wait, 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 wait. Uh, they're just here to see the movie, too. Oh, thank oh. Oh, you. Oh, wow. Daddy, can I go to the bathroom? I've got to go. Uh, yes, son, but uh, hurry back. Okay, okay, I'll be right back. I'll be okay. right back. Oh, dear, huh? you should not have let him go. Why not? He might get beat up and be forced to tell where our car is. Then a gang will come here and torch our car. Oh, no. Wait, 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 wait. Here he comes now, and nobody's following oh, him. Oh, thank goodness. Boy. I didn't want him to burn to death. Oh, thank goodness. Wait, 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 wait. What, what if it's not really him, but a sadistic killer who has killed our son, put on his clothes, and plans to torture and kill all of us? Venture aboard the SSLA, battleship of Southern California, in another exciting episode of Space Patrol. As you remember from last week, the captain and his son were taken aboard the pus nesters to be used in terrible, excruciating medical experiments. We join them now as they await their fates in the brig. Ain't this something? I end up my glorious career as a laboratory test rat. It's only fitting. Your whole career's been Mickey Mouse anyway. Son... I know the strain of the situation has caused you to lash out at your father like that. I understand. Thanks, Dad. But I'm still gonna... <laughs> in your face. Why, you... <laughs> Dad, don't you... Dad, don't you spit that! Dad, Dad, don't you spit that! Don't you spit that! <laughs> please, please don't fight. Who's that? Nurse Nancy Goferlick. Oh, it's uh, so dark in here, I didn't know anyone else was in the cell. I should have known, though, from the smell of the delicate perfume in the air. I'm not wearing perfume, Captain. Skippy, Junior! I just put a little behind my ears. You little stinking wuss! Oh, shut up! Boy. Captain! Captain, I'm frightened! Please hold me. Nurse Nancy Goferlick, I don't really rec... Did I ever make a pass at you? No, never. And you must be a skank, so begging your ugliness, I'll pass on the hug. Son, uh, you want to hug the skank? Dad, can't you be polite even in your last hour? Ah, you're right. Nurse uh, Goferlick, I'm sorry. I'm sorry you're a pig. I'm sorry I pointed it out. And I'm sorry I can't stomach to hold you. Oh, thanks. No problem. All right. They would like to be injected with live rabies and then have their eyebrows ripped off with a claw hammer. Her. She her. does. Just her. come in the corner. Take, take her. her. Take her. All right. Let's go. No. Come on. No. Let's go. No. I'll be back in just a couple of minutes, yeah, gentlemen. Take your time. Take your time. <laughs> Ooh, her eyebrows ripped off. Ooh. Yeah. Maybe the best she's ever looked. 
Too bad she's going to be foaming at the mouth and howling at the moon. Dad, what are we going to do? Are we just going to sit here and watch our crew haul off to excruciating deaths? There is one thing we can do. What? Keep a happy thought. Uh-huh. Good, good. Yeah. Dad, uh, I want you to keep this instead. Uh-huh. Why, you... Wait, wait, wait. Why? Wait. You just spit on me, right? Yeah. Well, it didn't feel wet. So? So I must be dreaming. Are, are you serious? Yeah. What a cheap out. The uh, old it was just a dream ending. Okay, Come okay. Listen, listen, listen. Let's be sure. If it's a dream, then I shouldn't be able to feel pain. Right. Here, take my belt buckle here and shove it up my nose. Okay. Go ahead. All right, all right. Does that hurt? Uh, no, no. More, more. All right. Is that now? No, no. Keep shoving. All right. Uh, how about now? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Now about now? No, no. Keep shoving. Dad, I've, Dad, I've got my whole fist up your nose. And it doesn't hurt. Huh. Son, this is just a bad dream. A bad script, too. Yeah, yeah, that's true, too. Oh, what a terrible script. Uh, Dad, Dad, wake up. Uh, what, what, wake what, up. What, what? Oh, Skippy Jr. I'm glad that dream's over. I wish this script was. Boy. Oh, what a terrible two-part dream. Al, it's over now. Yeah, Dad, get dressed and uh, come on up to the bridge. Yeah, just one thing that puzzles me. What's that, Dad? Why is my belt buckle shoved up my nose? Yeah, why is my uh, fist all wet? I don't know. Why is this Join happening? us again next time for another exciting episode of Space Patrol. And Jerry Mathers as the Beaver. Hi, I'm home, everybody. Aren't we lucky? Shut up, go guts. Make me sewer breath. I'll make you. I'll shove this empty Amway scotch bottle down your throat and hit you in the neck with a bat. Oh, I'm scared. You better be, you miserable, mealy mouth. Uh, uh, well, I'm uh, uh, spit it out, sot brain. I'm thinking, I'm thinking. That uh, cheap booze has fried your brain. Cut me some slack, will ya? The only thing I'd like to cut is your scrawny throat. <laughs> Hi, Mom. Hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. You were home? Uh, why, my most bestest son, the most wonderful thing to spring from my loins. What about me, Dad? You didn't spring from my loins, Beaver. You slithered from them. <laughs> <laughs> and when I first laid eyes on you in the delivery room, I begged the doctor to send you to the animal shelter to be put to sleep. <laughs> oh, gee. <laughs> now, now, listen, everybody. Uh, a new sucker moved into the neighborhood. I haven't seen him yet, but I called and invited him over here with his wife under false pretenses. Now, when they get here, I'm going to waylay him with an Amway pitch. Beaver, you hold on to these Amway sales pamphlets, okay? Okay, Dad. All right. Uh, that, that must be them now. Yeah, I'll get it. Oh. Can I help you? Uh huh. What's happening, bro? Uh, not much. Uh huh. Are you are you the Cleavers? Uh, yeah, yeah. But uh, we didn't order anything, and uh, my sons do all the yard work. Uh huh. Well, we the new folks down the street. Huh? I'm Ralph, uh -huh. and this here is my wife, Farrah Lynette Jacqueline Aretha Smith uh -huh. King. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Just call her, I just call her Bo. Uh -huh. However, if you ever call her while well, I ain't here, uh -huh. then I'm going to come over here and, uh, and I'll break your face. Uh -huh. Or several of the uh, bones of my assorted pleasure. Uh -huh. Now, somebody uh -huh. called and invited us over here this evening. Oh, uh, uh, come on in. Okay, uh, uh, well, that, that'd be fine. I don't uh -huh. mind coming in here, but uh, it, this better not be a waste of my time. Oh? Uh -huh. Yeah, you see, I don't like people who waste my time. My time is valuable. Uh -huh. Just, uh, I say, it's valuable. Uh -huh. Now, two weeks ago, uh -huh. a dude tried to lay a Shackley sales pitch on me. Uh -huh. and, and, and she can tell you here, Bo can tell you here, uh -huh. Last time I checked on him, the man was still on life support systems. Oh. <laughs> so don't be wasting, don't be jacking with me. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, well, uh, sir, I, I didn't call you. Uh, did, did you call him, June? No, uh-uh. Wally? No, Dad. Oh, look, look, look. The Beaver's got his hands on some Amway sales pamphlets. I'll bet you he's the one that called you. He was going to lay an Amway pitch on you. Did that little dark there call me over here? Uh, 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 are, you, are you serious? Are you serious? Uh, uh, yeah. Man, oh, man. Uh, listen, nor normally, normally, I'd, I'd beat him within an inch of his life. But, but, but because I'm just a neighborly kind of guy, I, I want to give you that honor, okay? Well, that, 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 that neighborly of you. Uh, that, yeah. that neighborly of you. Uh -huh. that, that, thank you very much. Uh -huh. I'm going to grab your little son of a bitch. Come oh, here. No, no. You come outside with me right now. No. Yeah. I'm going to give you a pitch. No. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to pitch no. one on you. No, I'll tell you that for sure. You're in trouble, boy. No, no, You're in no, trouble. No. Jules, Jules, quick, call, call the police and tell them there's a black guy out in the front yard beating on our kid. All right, okay, I will do it. Yeah, we, we, we gotta get these black people out of the neighborhood. Join us again next week for the new Leave it to Beaver. Christmas music. The story of the Cartwright family and their struggle in the Old West. All right, Adam, sit down. I think we got problems. <laughs> Tell me who they are, Pa. I'll go hurt them real bad. Oh, it's a family sign. I believe it's headed for extinction. I don't think we smell bad, Pa. I said extinction. You in it? Uh -huh. Now, there aren't going to be any more cart rides. That's what I'm talking about. Why not, Pa? Because the whole dead gum bunch of you boys are too weird. That's why. I'm back, Pa. I'm back. Did
Did you clear the trees off the South 40 like I asked, Haas? Yeah, Pa. Oh, 126 of them. What'd you do with the trees? I ate them, Pa. Oh, Dad. Got Every you. one of them. Hey. <laughs> Yahoo, I'm home. We're in the library, little Joe. Sashay your rear end in here. We're talking about the future to Cartwright family. Oh, this should be deep. Okay, but please hurry. Dwayne will be here in a few minutes to join me in a nature walk. I hate that Dwayne. <laughs> Let me kill him, Pa. I'll hurt him real bad first. He'll scream with pain for a long time. Shut up, Adam. Shut up and wipe the foam off your mouth and sit down. Now, like I was saying, Haas here... Haas, where's the piano bed? I hate it, Paul. I was getting so hungry. You idiot. Uh, Haas, for instance, will never have any kids because if and when he ever does get married, his wife will die at the stove trying to keep his fat gut full of food. Food where? Where, Paul? Where? Shut up. Shut up. We've gone through seven Chinese coolies this year alone. <laughs> now, as for you, Adam, if you ever get married, your wife will run off as soon as she discovers how brutally sick you are. <laughs> yeah, I'm sick, ain't I, Pa? Yeah, but you're good sick. <laughs> Little Joe over here is weird sick. Here we go. Uh, Father, may I be excused? I believe Dwayne is here, and we have that nature walk. You and that pansy will go tiptoeing through the tulips when and if I tell you you can. Now, shut up, mister. Yes, Father. The, the, the point is, if I just divide this land into thirds and leave it to you boys, when I die, here's what'll happen. Haas will eat every living thing on his third, trees, weeds, and animals, turn it into a barren wasteland. Adam, you'll set fire to your third and stand at the edge of it, gunning down everything that gets out of it. And little Joe will probably turn his third into a dandy boy hell spot retreat. Can I start eating my third now, Pa? <laughs> please, please! Give me some matches, Pa! Dandy boy hell spot retreat. The name has a nice ring to it. Let's Dead. Let's Dead. Let's that you boys are sick. Let's Let's sick. Gosh, you are unmercifully sick. 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 Join us again next time for Bonanza. A great gift for the practical pessimist. Fight the Wind is a huge 8-foot diameter fan with adjustable speeds. Get yourself ready for that coming hurricane by taking it outside, turning it on, and learning to walk in 20, 30, yes, even 50 mile an hour winds. Fight the Wind is even a great gift for the short-tempered. Kids on your nerves? Well, turn on the fan, put the kids in front of them, and blow them down the street. Upset with a neighbor? Roll Fight the Wind over to the front of their house, set it for 120 miles an hour, and sit back and watch as trees are uprooted, windows are blown out, and walls caved in. Fight the Wind, only $745.69. Great gift. Oh, boy. Great gift item. Here's another one for you, too, from the London and Engelman Christmas catalog. If you have your catalog and you ordered it, and you can, by 190 was 190 $4.74 so. by mm -hmm. registered mail. We'll send you one on page 412, Nuke Tabs. Yes, Nuke Tabs are small capsules that you and your family can take to reproduce in your body the same effects of being caught in a nuclear holocaust. Yes, scientifically designed to cause nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, hair loss, skin sores, chalky teeth, and sterility. Nuke Tabs give you the opportunity to sample a nuclear devastation so you can properly prepare for it. And if one never comes, that's okay. You'll still be the hit at every Every party, because when someone approaches and says, hey, you look like you were just nuked, hey, give them a gap tooth grin and offer them a nuke tab of their own, huh? Only $417 a box, or you may want some napalm cheese dip or some concussion crackers mm. to go with your party. It'll liven up any festive occasion during the holiday season. Oh, that's a great gift. Just two of the many fabulous gifts from the London and Engelman Christmas catalog. For another outer space adventure aboard the SSLA, Battleship of Southern California, in another exciting episode of Space Patrol. Dad! Dad, what's going on in there? Not to stay out of here! Dad, I hear something going on in there! Dad! Dad, what are you doing to Nurse Nickeldorf and Rodslick? They tried to take over the ship. It was mutiny, son, and it was brutal. But, Dad, they don't even have any weapons. All right, all right. They came in for a spit fight and got out of control, and I cold cocked them. You satisfied? Oh, I can't believe it. I know you can't. Beating up women. Listen, listen, just shut up and help me drag them back to their rooms, will you? I cannot believe you, Dad. Come on, come on, we'll have to use attention, the Attention, attention, all hands. We are being invaded by a Magadite star cruiser. A battle is imminent, Captain Skippy. Report to the bridge immediately. Oh, boy. Dad, what are we going to 
can do. I don't know, son. Oh, well, no. I know it. We can't leave the nurses. Will here. Captain Skippy get, get to the bridge on time? Will he leave the battered and bruised nurses in his quarters? Will he try to return the nurses to their quarters and then try to make it to the bridge? Tune in next week and find out for the exciting conclusion. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Stop right there. What is this garbage? Two weeks ago, the writers gave us a flimsy two-part script that ended up stinking the joint up last Monday. Now they're going to take this week's piece of trash and turn it into another two-parter. What's the matter? Boy, this is really nauseating, Dad. I'm sick No way, no way. Right. Forget it. Forget it. Forget it. I ain't doing it. Period. Attention. <clears throat> the radar screen malfunctioned. There is no emergency. Uh, no emergency. It's all over. Forget it. Go back to, to whatever you were doing. It's over. No emergency. That's more like it. <laughs> right. Yeah, but... Damn, we can't just leave like this for Pete's sakes. I mean, that was nothing. All right, We're all supposed right. to have an episode. We're supposed to have excitement. A, a beginning, a middle, an end, a conclusion. Yeah. Come on, excitement. All right, all right. I'll tell you what. Why? You go out of the room. Yeah. I'll torch Nickeldorf's dress. You come in. We'll try to snuff it before she croaks. Well. Okay. Pete's nothing. All right, I'll go okay. out here. Think, go out. That's going to be exciting. That'll be exciting. All right, all right. Go, I'll go out over here. Are you ready? All right, go ahead. Okay, here goes. Ready? Yeah. Whoa, it's burning. Fire! Get out the fire! Let's, let's, fire! Let's Put out get, the fire! Get the fire! Put out the fire! Come on! We gotta get the fire out! Put out the fire! Get it out! Oh. The fire's out! It's out! It's out! We got the fire out! Look what it did oh. to her hair! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Boy, that was exciting, Dad! In time, huh? Woo. Save her life! Oh. Join us again next time for another exciting episode of Space Patrol! One still back on the uh, hygiene page run. Mm -hmm. This one is called Face Off. No, it's not a hockey game. It's a special gift for Grandma. You see, yes, Face Off is a special facial dissolvement soap. Oh, what a great gift. Ah, uh, this is great. Uh. <laughs> when Grandma smears it over her wrinkled face, she won't believe what comes off in the sink. Face Off, only $265.49, or get Dad hands off for only $179.95. Mm. And just under that, this is a great complimentary gift from Mom or Sis. Uh -huh. It's called Swab Job. On the surface, swab jobs look just like regular cotton swabs for the ear. But inside those cotton swabs are tiny earwax activated blasting caps. So when mom or sis go to clean out their ears, wait for the explosion, and then run in the bathroom and yell, swab job, swab job, swab job. <laughs> what a great time you'll have all Christmas long. Put fun back in Christmas. Swab job, only $29.95 each. Well, there is just a sample of the many fine gift items this year in the London and Engelman Christmas catalog. Order yours today. Oh. Woman, private eye. And this is my city, Los Angeles. Sure, I wreck havoc. You bet I do. If God had wanted me to sit quietly behind a desk, he wouldn't have made my rear end so bony. And he wouldn't have given me two pig iron-like fists, a quick temper, or the overwhelming urge to say, make me to people bigger than me. And he darn sure wouldn't have created the brain that invented the Montgomery Ward's T-2000 semi-automatic or given me the $39.99 that it took to purchase one. So given all these abilities and tools, it'd be sacrilege not to use them. So it was no surprise when I got a visit last Thursday. I was in my office chopping the tail and clipping the ears off a rat when he walked in. Excuse me, I... Ooh, what are you doing? What does it look like I'm doing, Sherlock? Ooh, looks like you're cutting the tails and clipping the ears off a rat. That's right. Ooh. And, and according to the count of the tails in my top desk drawer, I got 15 little gray Doberman pinchers cruising through the walls of this building. Ooh. Now, what do you want? Oh, are you Dan Warming, Private Eye? Yeah, and this is my city. Los Angeles. This is for you. It's a court summons. Have a nice day. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Why, 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 why? I whipped out my Montgomery Ward's T-2000 semi-automatic. As previously mentioned, the most powerful catalog handgun on the market and shoved the barrel up his nose. He sneezed, my gun backfired, creasing my shoulder with a snot-covered bullet. Hot shoe! Oh, booger, booger, booger! No, I'm sorry. Now, what's this all about? Well, remember the party you went to a, a few weeks back? Oh, I'm a party monger, Hoss. Which one? Uh, the one where you stuck your gun into the guacamole and fired it? Yeah, I was demonstrating its awesome power. Well, you got dip all over the rug and the walls, and the apartment owner's suing you for $900 in damages in small claims court. You mean I'm going to be on TV again with that uh, Doug Wapner and Judge Llewellyn? No, no. Let me ask you something. Uh, does that bailiff Rusty character carry a real gun? No, I said small claims court, not 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 people's court. You're not calling on people's court. I stuck the gun barrel in his nose again. Wow, what's this? What's this? What's this? What's this? I want to be on the people's court, and if you sneeze, I'm going to knee in the groin. Okay, I'll, I'll see what I can do for you, mister. Yeah, Take see. Take the gun out of my nose. Okay. Yeah, wow. See you later, slick. 
I went to court the next week, lost the case, and had to cough up the 900 bucks. Well, I didn't really cough it up. I wish it was that easy. Nope, I had to exhume my grandma and take her gold fillings out of her cavity-filled mouth. Low? <laughs> you bet it was low. But if God didn't want me to do it, then he wouldn't have given me the stomach to be able to pull something disgusting like that off. Well, it's back to my rat beautification program, because I'm Dan Woman, private eye. And this is my city, Los Angeles. <laughs>